Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the most important shortcuts you need to know in Photoshop to work more efficiently. This video is part of my Photoshop Essentials series, which is also the first module in my brand new course where we put together this composite that you see here from beginning to end using all the latest and greatest tools in Photoshop. If you haven't checked it out already, I will include a link in the description where you can. Also, I will include in the description of this video a link to my full Photoshop shortcuts cheat sheet. Now, we won't be covering all those shortcuts in this video. However, I do want to show you the most important shortcuts you need to know to speed up your workflow. So let's dive into Photoshop. I already showed you earlier that you can always learn various shortcuts by going to the tools and looking what is the shortcut on the right. Now, those most of the shortcuts for your top menu are going to be command and then a letter or command shift and a letter. So select all, for example, is command A, deselect is command D. Um, under your adjustments, your curves is command M, your levels is command L. So command plus a letter is usually going to be a top menu function up here. Your shortcuts for tools are going to be single letter shortcuts. So let's quickly look at these tools. I'm going to collapse this into a single column and let's work our way down the column. So for the move tool, let's put ourselves on another tool here. For the move tool, the shortcut is V. For the marquee selection tool, our shortcut is M for marquee. For the lasso tool, our shortcut is L for lasso. For the object selection tool, our shortcut is W, and that is a carryover from the magic wand. If I hit W again, I'm going to go to quick selection, W again, I'm going to go to the magic wand. For the crop tool, it's C. For the eyedropper, it's I. For our correction tools, meaning our spot healing tools, it's J. For the brush tool, it's B. For the stamp tool is S. For the eraser, it's E. For our gradient, it's G. And then these do not have a single letter shortcut, so you're just going to have to go to those on your menu bar. You could assign shortcuts to them, but honestly, you don't use these tools enough for them to deserve their own shortcut. Next, you have O. This is for your dodge and burn tools. P for your pen tool. T for your type tool, A for your path selection tools, U for your shape tools, H for the hand tool, and Z for the zoom tool. Now the hand tool and the zoom tool are tools that you're going to use all the time to navigate around your Photoshop file. So as you zoom in, and right now we've got the scrubby zoom turned on, with the scrubby zoom, if I click and drag to the right, I'm going to zoom in, click and drag to the left to zoom out, and then we can fit screen or fill screen. So those are your options there. The shortcut for fit screen is command zero, and the shortcut for 100% is command one. And you can also see your zoom level down here on the bottom left. Now, when you're on any other tool inside of Photoshop, in order to access your zoom, hold down the space bar and command, and that'll give you your zoom tool. So space bar and command. Now, when you're using a Mac, you don't want to do command space bar because that'll bring up your spotlight. So make sure you do space bar first, then command. Okay. To access the hand tool, and the hand tool basically allows you to move what you're looking at. So it doesn't actually move anything in your file, but if you're zoomed in here and you want to look at what's on the right of your file, 
you want the hand tool, hand tool to pan to that part of your image. Now, if you have any other tool in Photoshop selected and you hold down the space bar, that'll temporarily give you your hand tool. So space bar for the hand tool, space bar and command for the zoom tool. So those are all your tools and also some basic navigation. Um, the one other or the two other shortcuts that you really should know Let's go ahead and make a new layer down here. Is filling in with your foreground or background color. So to fill in with your foreground color, you're going to hold down option or alt on a PC and then hit delete. And that'll fill your entire layer or your selection with your foreground color. So if I had a selection, let's go ahead and make a circle here and Let's change our foreground color to red. If I hold down Option, Delete, or Alt Backspace on a PC, that will fill in my selection with this foreground color. And if I wanted to fill it in with my background color, so let's go ahead and make our background color blue. Rather than Option Backspace, I'm going to do Command Backspace. Oops, let's change this to blue. So command backspace will fill with my background color. Option backspace will fill with my foreground color. Now to deselect, you're going to do command D. That'll drop your selection. And then if you want to default your colors here, you want to hit D on your keyboard. And then to switch between these two colors, hit X. So those are all important shortcuts to remember. I'm going to go ahead and throw this away. Um, a couple other shortcuts that you should know is your blending modes all have shortcuts. So if I have a layer selected like this phonograph layer and I'm on the move tool, I can access all these blending modes through shortcuts. Now I mentioned earlier, the most important shortcuts to know are multiply screen, and overlay and color and soft light. So I'm just going to tell you the shortcuts for those. To get to screen, you're going to hold down Shift Option S. To get to multiply, you're going to do Shift Option M. To get to soft light, you're going to do Shift Option F. To do overlay, it's Shift Option O. And then color is Shift Option C. And as you can see, all of them are Shift Option and then a letter. Let's go ahead and put this back on normal, which is shift option N. And the other shortcut that you should know is for your opacity here. If you hold down one of the number keys, so like five, you're going to get 50% opacity. If you do two number keys directly after each other, like eight, five, you're going to get 85. To get back to a hundred, you're going to do zero. And to get to zero, you're going to do zero twice. So that's how you can change the opacity of your layer using shortcuts. And those are the most important shortcuts to know in Photoshop. As we're working through our project, I'll also mention some other shortcuts. Oh, the one other shortcut that is very important is Command T for transform. Now, if you are new to Photoshop, you may want to have this show transform controls on. This is how you're going to move, rotate, or scale anything inside of Photoshop. So you can see as I get close to these transform controls, I can either scale it, rotate it, um, move it, and so forth. However, I'm going to delete or escape out of that. I personally find these bounding box is distracting. So I'm going to turn them off. Now, if I do want to rotate this, what I'm going to do is do command T on my keyboard and that'll bring up my transform controls. Now also they did add this to the contextual taskbar. So right down here, if I click on that, that'll also bring me into free transform. So that's command T and those are all the most important shortcuts inside of Photoshop. 
There you have it. Those shortcuts will help you get more done in less time. In our next tutorial, I'll be covering the camera raw interface and how to use it for powerful processing of your digital raw files. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, like and share this video, and leave a comment. I will see you next time.